In this video, we're going to see how to create a feathered oval effect with Photoshop Elements. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's head over to Photoshop Elements and get started with this tutorial. I'm using Photoshop Elements 11 for this video, but you can use the same steps in other versions of Elements to get the effect that we're going to go over in this tutorial. And this effect looks really good on portraits. The first step is to duplicate the background layer. Watch over in the right side of the screen where the Layers panel is. On a Mac, press Command-J, or if you're on a PC, it would be Control-J, and that adds a duplicate copy of our background layer in our Layers panel, and it's named Layer 1 by default. All of our changes will be applied to Layer 1. Step 2 is make a selection. And since we want to end up with our photo in the shape of an oval, we'll use the elliptical marquee tool. So go over to the toolbox and the second group of tools from the top is labeled select. Notice there are four tools shown in that group. The elliptical marquee tool is located in the top right of the select section and it looks like an ellipse with dotted lines around it. But instead you can see that there's a rectangle with uh, dotted lines around it. That's because the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool share the same space in the toolbox. And right now the rectangular marquee tool is there. To make the elliptical marquee tool active, we'll have to choose it from the tool options panel, which is located at the bottom of the window. Go ahead and click on the rectangular marquee tool, and then we can see both tools down in the tool options. Now we can click on the elliptical marquee tool to make it the active tool. You can see that it now shows up in the toolbox. With the elliptical marquee tool active, move your cursor over the top of your photo in the live work area. When your cursor gets over your photo, Photo, it changes to a crosshair. Now we're going to click and drag diagonally to make our oval selection. Start somewhere in the top left area of your photo and click and continue to hold down your mouse button as you drag diagonally down and towards the right. Don't worry about the size or position of the selection. We'll adjust that in the next step. Let go of the mouse button and you will see your selection defined by the marching ants. Let's go to the next step where we'll fine tune our selection. Step 3 is adjust your selection. In this step we will determine how much of the photo will show in the feathered oval. Go up to the select menu and choose transform selection. A bounding box with eight handles appears around our selection, and we also see a green check mark and a red no symbol at the bottom of the box. Now we can adjust the size of the selection by clicking and dragging on the handles of the bounding box. To make the selection taller or shorter, you use the center handles at the top or bottom of the bounding box. When you place your cursor over either of those center handles, you'll notice it turns into a double-headed arrow and that indicates that we can drag up or down. So I'll place my cursor over the top center handle and click and hold down the mouse button as I drag upwards. And as I drag, the bounding box gets taller. The marching ants won't change until I let go of the mouse button. Keep in mind that you need to stay far enough away from the four sides of the photo to allow the fade to gradually go to white. So I can't bring the top line all the way up to the top of the photo because there won't be enough room for it to fade off gradually. So I'm going to bring it down a little more. I want to make sure I have enough space in between the top of the photo and the selection. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom center handle. I'm just going to click and drag it down a bit and then let go. And you can always go back and readjust those handles um, as long as you haven't uh, clicked on the green check mark yet. Now I also want to mention that you can move your selection to a different area without changing its size by placing your cursor anywhere inside of the bounding box. When your cursor goes inside of the bounding box, it changes into a black arrowhead. Once you see the uh, black arrowhead, you can click and drag to move the whole selection. And then when you get it where you want, you just let go and your selection will move to that position. To change the width of your selection, you click and drag on either the right or left center handles. And again, you'll see the double-headed arrows indicating that you can drag it to the left or to the right. So I'm going to pull this one out a little more. 
and I'll pull this one out a little more as well. And these four corner handles, uh, if you put your cursor over one of those, you can see you get a double-headed diagonal arrow indicating that you can click and drag uh, diagonally up or down and it will make your selection change in two different directions. As you can see, using the bounding box to adjust your selection is pretty intuitive. Once you're happy with the size and position of your oval selection, just click on the green check mark and the bounding box will go away and your changes will be made. Step 4 is feather your selection. This is the step that gives us the soft edge around our oval. Go up to the select menu again and this time choose feather. The feather selection dialog box will appear. There's just one field in this box. It's called feather radius and it's measured in pixels. I know from testing this image out earlier that 10 pixels works pretty well for this photo. In general, for most photos, you'll probably be in the 5 to 30 pixel range, depending on the size of your photo and how much of a vignette you want. Click OK once you've entered the feather radius, and the dialog box will close and the feather will be applied to your selection. The marching ants will still look the same after you apply the feather. Step 5 is invert your selection. Right now, the inside of the oval is what's selected. But to fade the edges of the oval, I need the outside area to be selected, the opposite of what we currently have. We can fix that by going up to the Select menu and clicking on Inverse from the list. You can tell from the marching ants that the outside is now selected. And now we're to the last step, which is fill your selection with white. To do that, go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Selection. The Fill Layer dialog box appears. In this box, we just need to make sure that the Use field is set to white. So click on the field and choose white from the pop-up list. Then click OK. We're all done with our selection now, so I'm going to go up to the Select menu and say Deselect so we get rid of our marching ants. And this is our final result for creating a feathered oval. You can see a written version of this tutorial at my website. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.